Before we start, I understand that there's a, a live transcription service being provided by Norma here, and I want to thank Norma very much uh, for doing that. I think it's absolutely super that we're having that service. Sorry, did I say super? I meant it's absolutely super califragilistic expialidocious that we're having that service here. So good luck with that, Norma. Okay, uh, how many of you are Wikipedia editors? Not very many, that's disappointing. How many of you are Wikidata editors? Well, I knew you are, yes. Okay, not very many. I'm hoping to convert some of you. How many of you know this statement on Wikipedia's mission? Imagine a world in which every single person on the planet has free access to the sum of all human knowledge. You heard that before? Okay, well that's what Wikipedia is about. So what is Wikidata about? Wikidata is imagining a world in which every single computer on the planet has access to the world's knowledge. Um, perhaps I should explain that a little bit. Wikidata is a sister project of Wikipedia, so it's hosted and, and looked after by the Wikimedia Foundation, like about a dozen other similar projects. And like Wikipedia, and indeed like OpenStreetMap, it is an open licensed, in this case it's a PD licensed, collection of information put together by volunteer editors, people like you and me. Uh, uh, unlike Wikipedia though, Wikidata is sets of statements of facts, very much like tags in OpenStreetMap. So it will say for a building, uh, this is the architect, or this is the person, uh, for, uh, uh, sorry, this is the architect, or this is the owner, or these are the coordinates. So the sort of information you might add to a building in OpenStreetMap, but a lot more of them. And the same things for people, and vehicles, and types of aeroplanes, and uh, nature reserves and any other sorts of things you care to think of, whether you can map them or not. So it has an item for every notable subject. So its definition of notability is everything that has a Wikipedia article and a lot more besides. Uh, so uh, buildings that have a heritage designation status, for instance, would be considered notable. But not every building, not your house and my house necessarily. And for every one of these uh, items, whether it's a building or something else, it allows claims or statements to be made, as I've just described, using a set of clearly defined properties. So we have a vocabulary. In other words, you can't just go in and say something like you can on OpenStreetMap as a tag. You have to, first of all, propose the property. So we have a property for buildings that says who the architect is. You have a property for uh, any number of items that says what the coordinates are on a map. Uh, you have a property for a person for their date of birth and another one for their date of death. Uh, and these properties are agreed by the community through a uh, democratic discussion process, if you like, uh, in order, that, as I say, we have a controlled vocabulary so people know what to expect when they use that data. Properties can have qualifiers, so we can say that the employer for this person is this company, but we can qualify that with a start date and an end date. We can qualify uh, that the person played for a particular football team, uh, or if you're American, for a baseball team, uh, and we can say that that started on a certain date and ended on a certain date, or indeed it ended but we don't know the date. We have a special way of expressing that as well. So those are qualifiers for properties. And every item in Wikidata is either an instance of something, so um, this building is an instance of a building, obviously, or it's a subclass of something. So a Boeing 747 is a subclass of a jet aeroplane, because we're not talking about an individual 747, we're talking about the class of 747s. So everything is either one thing or the other, and it's worth knowing that as you use Wikidata. And the claims can show relationships between items. So when we say uh, that this building is occupied by the United Nations, the United Nations is also an item, and we build a relationship between the two. And claims can include identifiers. So in other words, unique identifier numbers or URLs in other databases. So this person has this VIAF identifier in library catalogues that uniquely identifies that person. This building has a designated number in the New York Directory of Buildings if such a thing exists. Or a historic building has the identifier in the list of scheduled monuments for this country or this city. So we, we apply identifiers and obviously those are very useful to people who want to link data together. And Wikidata, very usefully, has multilingual labels. Do any of you subscribe to the tagging list on 
the OSM mailing lists. Yes, you'll have seen quite a dis nice laugh there. Uh, you'll have seen quite a discussion about the use of these labels recently. I'm not going to go into that too much today, but do talk to me over coffee later on if you're interested. But these labels uh, enable you to fetch a string that identifies something in another language. So in English, we say cheese. In French, fromage. In German, cassa. In Arabic, I don't know how to pronounce it, and it looks like a spider's writing to me, but to an Arabic speaker, there's another way of saying cheese. And so it goes all around the world. Uh, and so those labels can be programmatically fetched from Wikidata and used, as can the descriptions. So uh, United Nations is an organization that brings countries together, might be the description, and that will exist in many languages as well. And as I say, all these statements are machine readable. You can write a computer program that will bring these statements into your, your application or into your database according to a set of criteria. So you can do things like saying, give me the name of all the mayors of cities in the United States, or give me the names of all the mayors of cities in the world who are female, and rank that list by the size of population of that city. And until recently, there was no way to answer that program simply by, uh, sorry, question simply by building a computer program, and now you can do it. And you should be starting to see now the relevance of this for OpenStreetMap, because you can say, bring me the, uh, all the buildings in the world by this architect and their coordinates and map those coordinates on OpenStreetMap and show me where they are. So there's, there's definitely synergy between the two communities, even at this level. I've said it's machine-readable data. And for those of you who understand the term, it's linked open data. There's an API that you can query. Uh, there is a tool server, <coughs> excuse me, which Wikimedia Foundation runs, which hosts a number of applications that help you to run those queries so you don't have to have your own server to do that. You can simply query them on the tool server and, and uh, you can find out more about that on Wikidata if you're interested. And there are data dumps. So you can get the entire database in a number of formats and you can have that on your own server or your own computer at home and run queries against it as, as often as you like without having to worry about hammering the API. And those are available, for, again, for those of you who speak geekish in JSON, XML, and RDF. And as I mentioned earlier, all of this data is under a public domain or CC0 license. You can freely do whatever you want with it. So it's a very powerful set for businesses, for humanitarian organizations, for individuals, for research bodies and students to use without having to worry about paying or even attributing it. It's nice if you say where you got it from. Please do. Just because you don't have to doesn't mean you can't be courteous. So what does it look like? Well, this is the entry for a building in my home city, Birmingham, England, called the Hall of Memory, which, as the name suggests, is a war memorial. Uh, and you can see there are some statements about it. And one of those statements says the architect was a man called S.N. Cook. Now, that data is already in OpenStreetMap, but in OpenStreetMap, it's just a string. It doesn't tell you who S.N. Cook was or which of the many people in history called S.N. Cook we're talking about. In Wikidata, there is another item for S.N. Cook that tells you his date of birth and his identifier in library catalogues and so on. Uh, and so, as you can see, being linked data, this all starts to pull together. Going back to the thing, it's an instance of an architectural structure. It's in the city of Birmingham, uh, and indeed what its coordinates are. I'm sorry, they're not on that slide. I thought they were, but uh, trust me, we have the coordinates for it. Uh, for reasons I'll explain later, we don't have the identifier in OSM, and I'll explain why we don't do that in a little while. And to illustrate what I said earlier, here are some multilingual labels for my city, Birmingham. OpenStreetMap. Obviously, in a lot of it's the Western script, it's the same name, but if you look at Arabic or uh, Egyptian on there, you can see that there are different labels. And the way that you can help Wikidata if you speak more languages than just English is you can add labels for the things that are of interest to you. So your home city or the historic buildings that you add to OpenStreetMap, you can put the labels into Wikidata if you'd be so kind. And you can put descriptions. You can see a few on the right-hand side of that slide there. Excuse me. I mentioned identifier. So again, we have for Birmingham the GeoNimes identifier. Uh, and there we have the OpenStreetMap relation identifier. I said we don't always put those in. We do sometimes, but again, I'll explain the problem with that in a little while. So every Wikidata item 
whether it's for the Hall of Memory or Birmingham or the architect, uh, a unique identifier to URL. Uh, and it can be expressed as a number beginning with the letter Q. So you can use either of those identifiers to uniquely refer to something in Wikidata. So we're not referring to any other building with the same name, even if it's in the same vicinity. We're referring to this specific one by that identifier or by that URL. And that's obviously very important when it comes to what we in Wikipedia world call punctuation. And we call this authority control. So, so those of you who are from libraries will understand that term. But remember, we're not doing this for every building in the world. We're only doing it for the ones that are considered notable because they have a Wikipedia article about them or because they've achieved notability. They've been noticed by society for a historical connection. Maybe somebody famous was born there and they have a blue plaque on the front. Uh, maybe, the, well, a plaque on the front in the UK, it would be blue. Uh, maybe they're, they're a designated building for their heritage or they have a notable architect or something or other makes them of interest to the world at large other than just the fact that they exist. And you can add your catalogues of data to Wikidata. So if you're an organization like the New York Library, if we heard their talk this morning, and you, ha you have identifiers for objects in the world that are on OpenStreetMap and in Wikidata, you can add those identifiers to Wikidata and there are tools for doing bulk imports so we can help you to do that if you have a large collection of information to add. So now let's have a look at that Hall of Memory in OpenStreetMap. This is it in JOSM, it's, it's actually an old slide but I don't think it's changed much in the meantime. And there are some of the tags on it and you'll notice near the bottom I've added the Wikidata identifier. Simple thing, you can all do this. Every time you add a notable building to OpenStreetMap, or if you already have added them, go back and do this anyway, you can go and find it on Wikidata and add that identifier, quite simply. Uh, if you're not sure how to find that identifier, if there's a Wikipedia article about it in any language, in the left-hand column is a link to Wikidata and the URL ends in that identifier. So you can easily find that from a Wikipedia article. Please do that, it would help enormously. You can add sub-tags, uh, and I used to think this was a great idea, but I'm not so sure. I'll explain why. Uh, this is a sub-tag for the architect, the SN Cook I was talking about. This is a tag that you would add to OpenStreetMap to the Hall of Memory saying who the architect was. But if you've already added a tag to the Wikidata entry for the structure, that information is progr programmatically available. So this may or may not be something that you feel you need to do. And if you think of things like a statue in a civic square, you can have a tag for the sculptor, a tag for the subject of the statue, you know, is it a king or a prince or a warrior or a Nelson Mandela or whoever, and possibly another tag for the material it was made from, even things like that. But maybe we don't need to do that. I mentioned that we don't often add OSM identifiers in Wikidata. And the reason we do that is this. Here's uh, editing in JOSM. Apologies to those of you who prefer to edit in other tools, but this is what I use. It's a bit of a religious matter for most people, I appreciate. Uh, but uh, I added a building as a point because I knew where it was and I had a reason to add it because it's uh, historically significant. And I added some metadata to the tags, uh, what it was called and, and the street address and so on. And it looked like that in the web view. But then in JOSM, I opened up uh, the aerial view in Bing and realized it was quite a large, significant building so I could trace the shape. So now we have two objects. One is a point with all the tags on. The other one is the boundary, the, 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 uh, the way that identifies the shape and size of that building. So I deleted the point and I added the tags to the way. Now, lots of you will have done this already or you'll have seen other people do it. So now, all those tags and metadata are on the way, but the identifier for that point is now redundant. It doesn't do anything useful. So if you try to fetch that metadata, you're simply told that I deleted the point. And in fact, if you look at the uh, web view, you actually get uh, not a 404 error that says this doesn't exist. You get a 200 error that says it does exist. Sorry to those of you who don't speak uh, server speak, but those are the return codes. Uh, so OSM will tell you it exists, but it has no data for it, which is, which is not helpful. The point of this is that that identifier doesn't persist. So the way people in Wikidata use OpenStreetMap is to look at the coordinates and match. I'm looking at a building which has this name and this architect at this location. What has OpenStreetMap got at this location? If it's only got one building within 500 meters with that name, 
then it's probably the same building. That's a fairly safe assumption to make. You'd agree? I think none of you would disagree with that. It's a fairly reasonable statement. So I made a proposal uh, two years ago at State of the Map in Birmingham that we should start to add Wikipedia tags to objects by, program, by using a computer program, the Dread automated edit that some of you are so afraid of, or some people are so afraid of, maybe not you, uh, by, by doing that matching. Let's have a look at the type of object and some other metadata like the name, and let's look in a reasonable radius for possible duplicates. And if there's no possible duplicate, we know we've got a match. I then modified that proposal in conjunction with some others to use Wikidata rather than Wikipedia, but it's still under this title on uh, Wikipedia if you wish to see it. That's my username slash Wikipedia. And a guy called Edward Betts has very kindly done some work. You can find it at that address. The, the screenshot is from a page. Matching tens, if not hundreds of thousands of objects in the world between OpenStreetMap and Wikidata to say these are the same thing on these being uh, matching because nothing else is a potential uh, some of these as you can see are relations some of them are ways some of them are no but in every case a reliable match it can be 95 percent that these match and we have proposed sorry i should move on i'm moving on too fast we've found things like this which is the national railway museum in york in england which exists as two objects if we go back that's one, you can see that now in gray at the bottom of the other one. So we wouldn't match that because we don't know which of those two we're talking about and there isn't a relation where there probably should be to, to match with those. So we ruled that, we've been very meticulous. I say we, Edward's been very meticulous. Similarly, this is HMS Belfast, a preserved World War I battleship in London. And that's its uh, cabin where you pay and find out about it before you go on board. And they're both tagged as HMS Belfast, but we can match those because this one is tagged as a ship. It's big and it's made of metal and it floats on water. And this one is tagged as a museum and it's a building. So if Wikidata says HMS Belfast is a ship, we can tag and match them. If it says HMS Belfast is a museum, we have to tag the other one. If it says it's both, which it shouldn't do, then we would avoid that. So my proposal uh, to do this uh, automated tagging is held up by three or four people who object to automated tagging. And my reason for wanting to speak to you about this today is to say we as a community have to make a decision. Are we going to allow automated tagging where we can be reasonably certain things match? Or are we going to let some bad experiences with automated imports that weren't well matched five years ago stop us from ever doing that again? And I think the argument is that we really have to move forward with allowing machines to do some of the work for us. There is too much material in the world to rely purely on manual tagging, and I hope you will all agree with me. So in summary, Wikidata stores many types of statement. It's copyright-free linked open data. Please use it. You can tag objects in OpenStreetMap with their equivalent Wikidata IDs. There are too many to do manually. We should automate this process and Wikidata welcomes your input, whether it's mass data imports uh, or whether it's simply adding a few things local to where you live. Please go away from here today and join up, uh, sign up for a Wikidata account. You can use your existing Wikipedia account. Have a play around with it. Add one or two statements to an item. Add one or two items. Get a feel for how it works. It's a very welcoming community. Those are my contact details. I'd like to thank you very much for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any anti-automated editors who want to have a pop at me first? Guy at the back there, hi. Oh, it works now. Um, I've noticed that a lot of uh, OSM uh, features, uh, points of interest, roads, etc., have Wikipedia links and yet no Wikidata links. And the thing is, knowing how Wikipedia articles can get renamed quite often, uh, this seems like a big mistake to store uh, links to article names rather than storing Wikidata links that are guaranteed not to change. Yes, uh, for those of you who didn't hear that, the point is that at the moment a lot of objects in OSM have a Wikipedia link but not a Wikidata link. 
if you have a Wikidata link, you can mechanically decide what the Wikipedia article is. And Wikidata IDs are more persistent. They don't get renamed, whereas Wikidata, sorry, Wikipedia names often get changed and the links can rot or they can end up pointing to a disambiguation page. It doesn't tell you which of the two buildings called City Hall or whatever we're talking about. So I agree entirely with the proposition. There's no harm in putting the Wikipedia links in, but Wikidata links are far more useful. And part of the proposal which I've talked about uses the existing Wikipedia names to do the matching, but we have to be careful because of that problem with link rot. At least if you're putting one in, please put both in. Thank you. Any question here and then one behind you? I think this is working. So um, I, I guess two parts. Um, the first part is uh, your data is CC0. Uh, it's and not my data, but the data is CC0. CC yes. CC0, not. CC yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm from Seattle. Um, and, and we're um, ODBL. So th isn't there a problem putting our data into? No, we're not importing data from OpenStreetMap. We're just importing the OpenStreetMap identifier. OK. That's, that's all. fair. That's and fair. that's just a, you know, that's a fact. You can't uh, copyright a plain fact. And, and um, so the other question is, um, I like the idea of putting in the Wikidata data links. Okay, one down, several to go. Well, but, but <laughs> the problem is, is that I can't read them. And that's, that's been the, the issue is all our tags are human readable. Um, no, though if you're on the tagging okay. list, you kind of wonder about that, but that's a different story. I was lucky enough to be in uh, Tunisia and then in Qatar recently, and all the Wikipedia tags were in Arabic, and I couldn't read them. <laughs> okay, um, so, so that's, that only applies in a certain part of the world anyway. You can read the tags in your language. Yes. That's a fair point. Um, um, so I, 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 I guess let me answer that, and I'll, I'll come back to your second point, if, if I may. Um, I, don't, I say there's no harm in putting in the Wikipedia links, but there is no reason at all why in future an editing tool like JOSM or ID or Potlatch couldn't fetch the Wikipedia labels, which are multilingual. So if there's a Wikidata ID, you could have it displayed to you in English, but somebody else could have it displayed to them in Arabic. I'm sorry, you had an, another point. My other point was, is wouldn't it be nice if um, like JOSM or ID could actually go fetch that for you? So thank you for doing thank that you, for yeah. me. Okay, great minds think alike. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I hope that will happen, and I'm hoping to talk to people over this weekend about making that happen. Uh, sorry, the guy in the green was next, and then there's one behind you if we have time. I'm all for having computers do the work for us. Good. But uh, if the correlation can be done automatically, what's the need to actually put the data into OSM? Can't you, if you need it, just make an external API call to determine what Wikidata node is associated with an OSM node? In theory, you could do that, but the problem is then lots of different people would have to code around that, whereas if we put the IDs in, they're available for people, and in Wikidata, we can do reverse lookups. So I think it's useful to have it there. Um, it will also inform people in the OSM community about the existence of a Wikidata item for the object in OSM that they're interested in. So as we were just saying, by displaying the label perhaps. So they can then think, well, I'll go and have a look at that and see whether it's got some useful information for me or whether I can add to it. So I think there's a benefit to humans as well as to machines to including those identifiers. Is there existing API that I can call to get those correlations? I have no out? idea. I put lots of stuff in. Okay. I let other people do the fetching it out again. Uh, Katie, would you know that? Is there an existing API call that will do this lookup? No. no. OK. Sorry, guy behind, you had a question. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the history was with bad um, automatic data input five years ago, but perhaps uh, one way to overcome some of those reservations now is to kind of choose a sample test area and then do automatic tagging there um, and see kind of how that works and then begin this, to slowly expand it out as opposed to doing it everywhere all I, at I once. I think that was the intention anyway, but uh, that's... Uh, still being objected to by some people, and I'm getting a flag to say we're really out of time, so uh, I think we... Oh, repeat the question, I'm sorry. I can't, can't read it from this far. Um, yeah, the question was, uh, maybe we should just do a small sample of automated edits and then make it a larger sample and larger still in order to reassure the community. That has been proposed, but some people still object to that. And I don't think we have a good mechanism for determining what the community consensus really is. It's just that a few loud people can stop something at the moment because it's status quo. Do we have time for more questions? OK, we do have time. Here again. Hi. So OSM 
benefit that could be achieved by linking data to uh, Wikidata? So the question is around the fact that although Wikidata has some notability requirements, OSM doesn't and will map, you know, my house and the garage behind my house and, and the fence around my house, but Wikidata is not interested in those. Um, I, yes, it does limit what you can do with it in some ways because you can't just assume there's a Wikidata item for everything. But there's very little information about my house that you could put in OSM, uh, sorry, you could put in Wikidata anyway. It doesn't have a notable architect. I'm not a notable person living there. And if I am, I still don't want you advertising that too widely. Um, so, so there's little to be gained. Um, the notability criteria for Wikidata are still being discussed. So at the moment, we have a Wikidata item for every street, even small cul-de-sacs, in, in the Netherlands, because they have a database from which you can draw that data easily, and they've just imported it all to Wikidata. We haven't got that for the rest of the world. We're discussing whether we should or not. So where that line is eventually drawn, we don't know. There will be some limitations, but the point is, for those things where Wikidata does have an item, as I showed with the example of the architect, there is a lot more information than OSM will ever store. And there's no point in OSM building another database to store all this information when Wikidata is already doing it. It would be such a duplication of volunteer effort when OSM volunteers and Wikidata volunteers already have more than enough to do. And I speak as somebody who wears both of those hats. No, there isn't a US Wikipedia. They, they all have different requirements, but we're talking about the notability of Wikidata requirements, not Wikipedia's. Question at the back up here again. That's you, yeah. Uh, this is actually more, more of a question for Kate. Um, are there any problems with uh, Wikidata handling dynamic JavaScript-based API calls to resolve uh, directly from the OSM site to show the queue number as an English, French, whatever article name, maybe with some additional information. So just moving the mouse over the number would show up all the relevant information. Do you want to answer that, Katie? I don't understand the question. I'm sorry, we're not hearing you. So perhaps it might be better if you discuss that afterwards and maybe tweet about the reply. In front of you, I think there was a guy with his hand up. Yes, in the striped top, hi. So, uh, the, do you have like any other, other use cases where you are considering the automated uh, uh, input from like any other systems for Wikidata? Because it seems like it's more of a knowledge, like if I know something about some object, I would enter that into your system. But yeah, so the, the question is about the automated input of data into Wikidata, and that happens all the time. And the Wikidata community are actively working with partner organizations, such as the World Bank, to look at how we can either cross-link or import data. There are tools that individual Wikidata editors who have a medium-sized, shall we say, database can import a whole set of data at once. I do it regularly. It's it's half an hour to learn to use. It's not an onerous task. You don't need great coding skills. My coding skills are very stale, but I can still work that quite easily. If you can do a spreadsheet, you can do that. Uh, I'm sorry, I think we're really out of time, but I'm here for the two days. Uh, come and find me. I'm easy to recognize, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you all for your attention.